When we talk about UTIs, I mean, a lot of times we are referring to the bacteria, but in many cases, there's a yeast component too. So yeah. there is a fungal component. Here's the cool thing though. You and I are always using blends and these blends are not only antimicrobial, but also antifungal, anti-yeast. So someone in the comments here wrote that they kept getting UTIs even after getting treated until they started yeast treatment. And that's the cool thing. Think about if you come in with antibiotics. Let's just quickly compare the conventional and functional approach. You come in and do the antibiotics. Those are not antifungals. But if we're using something like bearberry, barberry, berberine, clove, silver, saccharomyces, boulardii, probiotics, we're creating an antifungal, antimicrobial, antiparasitic protocol all in one, which is awesome because sometimes we're killing multiple birds with the same stones. And that's why we love what we do. 100%. And of course, you know, a good history will kind of figure this out based on, you know, if you have a new sexual partner or not, STDs always can be a thing. So we're looking at chlamydia, maybe gonorrhea, right? And so these type of infections, I think we could probably see some improvement with some of the natural things, especially if we add in silver and such. But these type of things, if you're not having results, they may require a special kind of antibiotic if, if that's at play. And so obviously, you know, it's going to be history dependent. If you're in a steady relationship, then that may not be a thing. Or if you're not sexually active, that that probably isn't going to be a thing. But it's always good to kind of keep that in the back of your differential list of things that you kind of work up through from least likely to most likely. Yeah, good call. So on that NAC paper, it actually did talk about chlamydia and it talked about the mycoplasma and there was a couple others in there and it was talking about the anti-adhesive, anti-biofilm properties of the of the NAC. So even if it were an STD, I think NAC is something you'd still want to implement. Yeah, I mean, usually you're going to see some level of discharge too mm -hmm. with, with some of the STD stuff. But worst case, you know, you can just get it tested, try some of the simple things out of the gates. A lot of times the history will tell you, especially if you know if you're um had intercourse and then the next day, you know, with, with your husband or partner and the next day you're starting to feel some issues, then it's probably going to be on the E. coli side, side of the fence, which is 90% of the time. That's 90%. So, you know, if you have 90% odds with something, we're going to go with that out of the gates for sure. Yeah. Okay. So testing strategies, just to summarize, you could do the at-home test strips for this. Uh, we think a good stool test would be in order to figure out what's going on with your gut and how that's affecting your microbes down south. Same with your partner. If we can get them on board, get your stool looked at. A urine test is helpful too, because we're going to be able to look at candida overgrowth and other types of fungal colonization. So we like the organic yep. acids. So an, an oat, a stool, and then some of the at-home test strips. I think that would be a great starting place. Could you do other things, blood work? And as you mentioned, like the uh, urinalysis and like in the conventional lab, you could do that too, but you might not if you do these, these top three. Absolutely. And then the big symptoms that would differentiate an STD over a UTI are going to be like more systemic symptoms. So like nausea, fever, swollen joints, sore throat, symptoms that are kind of have gone more systemic. And of course, there can be some localized symptoms that can be more severe, like extreme discharge, um, severe rash in that area, blisters in the general area. But look for more systemic type of symptoms um, that could be driving that.